Next time you're waiting at a train station or watching a locomotive thunder past a crossing, look down. Beneath those massive steel rails and heavy wooden ties, you will always see the same thing. Stones, millions of them, rough, gray, jagged stones stretching out for thousands of miles. It doesn't matter if you're in India, the UK, or the United States, the stones are always there. But if you ever stop to ask, why? Why do we rest our most advanced high-speed trains on a loose pile of rocks? Why don't we just bolt the tracks to a solid concrete road? The answer isn't just about saving money, it's a brilliant piece of engineering that protects the train from sinking into the earth, and it hides a surprising history that connects modern railways to ancient sailing ships. Welcome to Simple Things, Surprising Histories. Today, we're uncovering the secret of the railway stones. To understand the stones, we first have to understand the problem. A loaded train is incredibly heavy. We are talking about millions of pounds of steel and cargo. If you placed that much weight directly onto the ground, the intense pressure would crush the soil. The tracks would sink, buckle, and the eventual train would derail. This is where the stones, technically known as track ballast, come in. To think of the track is a layer cake. You have the steel rails on top, they sit on those horizontal beams, which we call sleepers or ties, and the sleepers sit on the ballast. The job of the ballast is to act as a cushion. It takes the immense concentrated weight of the train and spreads it out over a wide area. It dissipates the pressure so the ground underneath doesn't get crushed. But here is the fascinating part. The tracks are not actually fixed to the ground. If you look closely, you'll see the tracks are floating on the stones. They aren't bolted into the earth deep below. They rely on friction and the sheer weight of the ballast to stay in place. This flexibility allows the track to slightly absorb the vibration of a roaring train rather than snapping under the tension. Now, you might be thinking, okay, stones support the weight, but why these specific stones? If you were to pick up a piece of track ballast, you'd notice something immediately. It hurts your hand. These stones are sharp, jagged, and ugly. You will never see smooth, round river pebbles on a railway track, and there is a very specific engineering reason for that. Imagine stepping into a pit of ball bearings or smooth marbles. You would slide everywhere, right? Smooth stones roll over each other. If a train went over smooth, round rocks, the stones would roll away under the vibration and the track would slide apart. Engineers used crushed stone, usually granites or quartzite, that has been smashed into sharp, angular shapes. When these jagged stones are packed together, they don't roll, they interlock, their sharp edges bite into each other, creating a solid, immovable mass that still allows for a little bit of flexibility. They lock the track in place, preventing it from sliding side to side even when a high-speed train screams around a curve. The stones don't just hold the weight, they fight the two biggest enemies of the railway, water and weeds. If we laid tracks on a solid concrete slab or just bare dirt, heavy rain would cause big problems. Dirt turns to mud, which washes away, leaving the track unsupported. Concrete creates puddles, which can rust the steel rails. But a pile of stones is perfectly porous. It's like a giant French drain. When it rains, the water flows instantly through the gaps in the stones and away from the track, keeping the ground dry and solid. And then there are the weeds. You rarely see a jungle growing in the middle of a train track. That's because this thick layer of sharp rocks makes it incredibly difficult for plants to take root. If plants were allowed to grow, their roots would break up the soil and ruin that stable foundation we need. So, the stones act as a weight bearer, a drainage system, and a weed killer, all in one. Before we finish, here's one last surprising detail. Why do we call them ballast? That word actually comes from the sea. Centuries ago, when empty wooden ships sailed to pick up cargo, they were too light to sail safely. They would bob around in the waves. To weigh them down, sailors would fill the ship's hold with heavy stones. This weight was called ballast. When the ships arrived at port to load up their goods, they would dump these stones on the shore. 
Early railway engineers, looking for cheap, heavy material to stabilize their new tracks, looked at these piles of discarded ship stones and thought, perfect, they used the ship's ballast for the train tracks, and the name stuck. So the next time you see those jagged gray stones, you'll know they aren't just rocks, they're a self-draining, weed-fighting, weight-bearing engineering marvel that has kept the world moving for 200 years. This is Simple Things, Surprising Histories. If you enjoyed this journey, please hit that like button and subscribe for more stories hidden in plain sight. Thanks for watching.